Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent. So the last place we left off, we had just met Max, and he had introduced us to the combat system, and that's really cool. I've never played a VN that has a combat system. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's go. All right, alarm tune you up. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> okay. It was already lunchtime before you knew it. You and Max rested by the porch for the time being after the training session. So, what do you say, Cassian? Think you cut out to be a fighter? <laughs> I guess so. I'd love to learn how to fight so that I could defend myself and maybe others too. Huh, <laughs> I like your spirit. Well, it's settled. Maybe you could be a nice addition to the guild after all. And I see you boys have become fast friends. Max nodded at Alyssa and she gave you both the usual mugs of cold water. I guess you could say that, ma'am. Well then. Lunch is ready. You boys better come along now. <laughs> you both joined her for another lovely meal of the day. Alyssa seemed a lot chattier this time around, and you also felt quite happy now that you've joined them in both in their bantering. It was probably the best time you've had for quite a while. Uh-oh. Until. Dun-dun-dun. Mm, that was great. Hmm. What else? Ah, I think Max invited me on a foraging trip next afternoon. It was quite nice. What? Next after? And you're saying it was quite nice? Wow, are you a time traveler? Even though he had me walking around a lot more than Alyssa. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm a little bit confused about the way that sentence was structured. Let me... Ah, I think Max invited me on a foraging trip next after... Okay, alright then. Uh, I had a little confused. Okay. But he did show me some more places I... I could look for extra plants or herbs and or extra plants or herbs to forage. So maybe I could even impress Alyssa next time around. And to think I thought Max hated me at first or something. He's been really nice to me. He even trained me again yesterday. Even though the way he trained me was rather rough. Uh, I don't think I would do I don't think I'd like to do a hundred push ups every day. Ah, speaking of which, I'm leaving for the city in two days' time as well. It's hard to believe it, but I'm actually pretty excited. Alright, that's enough talking to myself. Maybe I need to write a diary or something. <laughs> I don't think anyone back there would believe this story anyway. Eh, probably not. What, that you turned into a furry wolf man? Uh-oh, here's that dream again. There's a sinking feeling in your chest as you recognize the stone corridors around you. It must be happening again. Huh? Echoes of screams and fleeting laughter send chills down your spine as you barely notice a dark figure looming on the far end of the dark hall. It was smiling. You took a step forward, only to find yourself falling into another unseen pit. Uh-oh. You can see it before you again, the endlessly spiraling abyss. You must have been falling for a long time. What is... You bit your tongue as you caught a glimpse of what looked like a gigantic creature. Help me! Its maw grew wider and wider, engulfing your form as you dove deeper into the abyss. What? The creature spoke suddenly with its horrifying timber. H huh Wake. What? Cassian, wake up! W what Uh oh. Well, Max is probably jolting him awake. You woke, finding yourself drenched in sweat. You take a moment to look around the bedroom, darting your eyes from one corner to the other. Cassian! Uh Cassian, are you alright, dear? You startled as a gentle voice spoke to you. It took you a moment to realize it didn't come from something hostile. Huh? Yeah, I, I'm fine. You muttered shakily, eyeing the bunny lady next to your bed. Sorry for making you worried, Alyssa. I had a nightmare. Uh, again. Oh, poor dear. It's alright. Alyssa whispered, petting your head. Her soft touch really helped you calm down. But a nightmare, you say? Hmm. You looked at her again. She looked quite concerned, despite the gentle smile on her face. Perhaps it is a sign. A, a sign? Ah, uh, it's nothing. Here, clean yourself up a bit, would you? You took the small towel she handed you and dried off the sweat from your neck and face, especially your forehead. Thanks, Alyssa. S sorry for bothering you as well. Did I oversleep again? Ah, not at all. In fact, I was going to let you sleep for a while after last night's errand, but you were shouting and whimpering so much I had to wake you up early. It wasn't something you thought you'd get used to, but before you knew it, your tail was wagging at her gentle caress and you breathed a sigh of relief as she scratched your ear. It's alright, Alyssa, thank you. 
You could hear her chuckling as you snapped out of your trance. You sheepishly nudged her hand away. Breakfast is ready if you want to eat. Then you can take it easy for a bit. She smiled as she left your side, stopping by the door for a few for a moment. Max is outside if you want to help him. He's going to chop some wood for the furnace. I'll be at the garden if you need me. Okay, thanks again, Alyssa. You put on your clothes and headed for the dining room, where your breakfast sat on the table. Oh, sweet! It's grilled chicken and eggs! Don't forget to wash your hands, Cassian. Alyssa shouted from outside. Got it! <laughs> you quickly washed your hands on the sink. All done! You sat at the table and delved into the meal. It's already been two weeks since you arrived here out of the blue. It was very terrifying and overwhelming at first, but now everything seemed quite alright to you. You've gotten a lot more accustomed to the new lifestyle at Alyssa's place, even feeling more comfortable with your new body and all that. In fact, you're quite excited for the days ahead. Although, there's still that prophecy thing Alyssa told you about. If you can recall correctly, it was something about a hero coming from another dimension that could defeat the evil king and restore peace to the land. Uh, I hate to say it, but that's still a bit too much for me right now. Damn! Damn, Max, you packing guns, boy! He's swole as fuck! What is? Ah! Jeez, uh, Max, you scared the crap out of me! You groaned, playfully hitting him in the stomach. Huh! Well, you were zoning out for a while now, Cassian. Chewing on that chicken bone like so. I know it's tasty. There's still some left if you're hungry for more. Ones with meat still intact for you to chew on. Oh, shut up! You feel yourself blushing hard as you glanced away from him. You know what he meant was different, but you couldn't help thinking of the alternative. I'm still new to all this, of you, to all this, you know. Well, since you're done chewing your bones, maybe you can help me finish up some work. Y yeah, sure. You pushed him out of the way as you left the table and proceeded to clean your dishes. You couldn't help but chuckling to yourself a little. Max has been a lot friendlier towards you since you since the first days you met. Sure, he might have been like that after been like that after that talk, but it still felt genuine to you, even if he tends to treat you like a younger brother at a lot of times. It was strange, but it still felt quite nice given that you never really had an older brother figure in your life up to that point. When you finished, Max had already gone outside. You followed suit to find him chopping some wood, shirtless. Damn! Max, you fucking hot boy! You can't help but stare at his body and fluffy chest. You just want to give him a big hug and bury your face among his fur, among other places. You can help me out any time you're done staring, Cassian. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you approached him, flustered as ever. But what can I do to help? Well, to start with, there are woods that need chopping. There's also chickens to feed and water to collect from the well. Hmm? What should I do? Chop some wood, feed the chicken. Let's give the chickens some food. I'll go feed the chickens. Sure thing. Have a good one. Max waved at you as he went back to chopping wood. You headed to the backyard after taking the grain basket from the shed. You've watched a little feeding the chickens before. Surely this would be simple, right? Oh no, nothing with chickens is ever fucking simple. Gah! Hey, hey, come here, you! You yelled as your feet as your feet started to hurt. You've been running here and trying there and there trying to feed the chickens in the backyard. You remember seeing them eating straight from Melissa's hand before. How did she manage that? Probably trust. Cassian! You hear Max calling from the side. You stop to catch your breath. Huh. <laughs> you don't have to run around so much, you know. Just sprinkle the seeds a bit. They'll flock right over when they're hungry. You decided to follow his advice, and surely enough, it worked, but only after you've left the backyard. You're convinced that the chickens must be scared of you for whatever reason. Yeah, they, you're a strange person. They don't know you. Eventually, you sat by the porch, exhausted. Done already? Yeah! You try to avoid looking at him too much. Boys! Lunch is ready. Alyssa opens the door she called for you. Come on in and eat before it gets cold. Yes, ma'am. Max followed Alyssa inside. You took a moment to catch your breath before heading in as well. It's quail season, so it's baked quail with some vegetable soup for lunch. Oh, that sounds delicious. Looks delicious as always, Alyssa. Oh, thank you. I made a lot, so be sure to fill up. I'll do just that. Max took a whole quail onto his plate. You too, Cassian. Eat up. Alyssa looked to you as she said gently, Yes, ma'am. <laughs> his face, his tongue is like, <gasps> Food! What the fuck, any fuck, 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 what? You ate four whole quails and three bowls of soup. You usually eat a lot less when you were human. Perhaps your appetite changed along with your body. Stuffed, you laid back along the chair. Alyssa was clearing the table when you suddenly felt something petting your belly. Feeling nice and full, Cassian? He ran his hand along your belly. 
His gesture made you blush again. It felt so nice, but he quickly swatted his hand away. Can you stop doing that? He yelled as you shouted from the chair, going to Alyssa to help her with the dishes. Oh, thank you, dear, but you don't have to help me, you know. It's all right. You already cooked his meals. This is the least I could do. Well, fair enough. Ah, by the way, I do have another favor to ask of you. Uh, sure. What can I do to help? Can you go with Max to the woods after this? I need some herbs for cooking. Oh, all right. I thought Max already went foraging yesterday. Ah, oh, that's true, but he's going to hunt some wild borax for tomorrow's rations. How did she mention it? Tomorrow is the day you left for the city, after all. Eh, and I would feel a lot safer if you're with him, you see. I understand, ma'am. I'll be sure to bring back some extras for you as well. Thank you, Cassian. Try not to wander off too far, though, all right? The woods tend to be rather unsafe at later hours, and I don't want anything bad happening to you. I will, ma'am. Don't worry. <laughs> you ready to go, Cassian? Yeah, Max asked you. Asked, Max asked as you both prepared for the short trip. Ready when you are, he said, grabbing a leather pouch from your room. Max was already waiting for you by the doorway. You could see him in his usual adventuring attire, his trusty crossbow resting upon his back. You wondered if you could bring something to defend yourself. Then again, you're just out picking herbs. It's not like you'd need a weapon for such a trivial task. After saying goodbye to Alyssa, you and Max headed into the depths of the forest. After going past the faded pathway, you began to see some clearings. Well, we'll meet up here before sunset, okay? Okay. I know Alyssa probably said this already, but don't go too far off the beaten path, alright? I won't be able to help you if you're lost in some forest caves. Yeah, I'll be careful. You too, Max. Heh, <laughs> I can take care of myself, Cassian, unlike a certain someone. Yeah, yeah, I know you're strong. Now go already. Those Borkses aren't gonna hunt themselves. After Max left, you took the usual path off, to the, off of the clearing to start looking for herbs. Explore. You wandered into the forest depths and found some herbs along the tree lines you recognize. Explore. You wandered a little further around the ancient tree close to the clearing and found some herbs. Explore. You wandered even further off the beaten path and found some herbs among the berry shrubs. You've already found what you're looking for. You could call it a day or perhaps you could search more. Uh, oh, you know what? Alyssa did tell me not to cause trouble. But let's explore more. Hmm. Some extra herbs wouldn't hurt, I guess. After bundling the herbs and tucking them away, you kept going. The further you headed to the forest, the darker it got, and there was more vegetation you had to trudge through. It was a hassle, but the reward was quite worthwhile. You found even more herbs and some edible mushrooms along the damp tree trunks. Looking behind you, you could see the path you've marked out to get back to the clearing. Max has probably returned by now. Perhaps you should go back. And again, you remember Alyssa mentioning something about the enchanted mushrooms you can find, on, can find among the muddy banks of the ancient swamp. Though not a direct request, Alyssa said she's always wanted some of those. Perhaps you could surprise her with the gift. Now that you're so close to it, explore. You're going to encounter some kind of damn monster. Dense shrubs and trees blocked most of your ways forward, but you could vaguely spot a small gap between the tree lines further to the left, which you managed to squeeze through after a moment of struggling. You headed even further along the dampened soil. The amount of herbs here were much more abundant. You're picking a handful of them when you suddenly heard something slithering among the shadows. You thought of running, but as soon as you lifted your legs, something had tough had already wrapped itself around your feet. Gah! You could barely utter a cry when that thing yanked you off your feet. Before you knew it, you were laying upside down with your feet being held up in the air. Under the shades, you tried to figure out what it was. The vines? As realization hit you, even more vines came out among the shrubs and tried to hold you in position. They slithered down along your hand, flipping you and dragging you into a tree hole. You can't make out what's inside, but you can feel it. Countless vines slide around your body, looking for something. Some, some of them violently tug on your clothes, undressing you bit by bit. Uh, ooh, oh, 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 oh my god. Oh, ooh, okay, uh, those are not normal vines. Uh, perhaps I should go back. I'm going to have to blur that. Hey, hey, that's my clothes. A vine slithered down your throat before you could even voice your protest. You could feel the rest of the <laughs> muzzle. You actually going to pull the vines out of your throat. Blah, 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 blah. You gag even more, feeling some kind of liquid coming out from the vines. It makes you feel all numb and hot inside. Oh no. You panted and squirmed, trying your best to fight against the vegetation, but it's all but it's all futile. You felt weaker by the moment, and some twisted voices in your head told you to just stop struggling and enjoy this. Huh? You feel vines sliding around your underbelly, tightening around your Ooh. Feeling you knew where this was going. But this feels nice. Alright, so maybe exploring in an ancient swamp? Not so bad. 
He shivered. The mere thought of that scared you. It must have been something in the liquid or the way the vines wrapped around your body that made you so horny. <laughs> it's still so weird that the plant is doing all this to you. But the more you thought of it, the harder you thought, and soon enough, you... Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh-oh. You felt a jolt of pleasure, and one of the vines opened up all of a sudden and engulfed you. Oh, my God. Gonna have to... Oh, yeah. I am gonna have to blur pretty much all this. You might reduce it to a mere whimper. You could... I didn't expect the game to get like this this so quickly. You could sense some of them creeping up along your thigh chamber. Oh god, you felt something. Oh my god. I can't read most of this. You tried to protest, but your body squirmed from if I entered your own. So your sweet spot. Oh god. They kept up like this. You don't know if you could hold on for much longer. And just as the thought left your mind, the vines attached themselves to your nipples. <laughs> it stimulated you even further. The sensation was too much for you to handle. As a muffled cry escaped your lips, you could feel your uh, mayonnaise squirting from your rock-hard thingamajig, and the vine on top of it sucked down every drop of it. Oh, God. It was over, but then you gag again, and the same liquid dripped down your throat. And before you knew it... Gone home, and you felt in heat again. You have a feeling it's going to be dry, whatever this vine monster was. And so your mind went known from as the vines had their ways with you. Every time you tried to fight back, they kept overwhelming you with even more motions that drove you on edge. They must have ravaged you for ages and felt like you've been for countless times before finally passing out. My god! <laughs> wow, that was intense! This game just doesn't give a fuck. Kind of curious what would have happened if we didn't do that. Uh, let us finally look up in your bed and took you a moment to notice Max sitting at the corner, a look of contempt written all over his face. But Max, w what happened? I found you near the old swamp, Cassian. Why did you wander off that far? I, I thought I could snatch some of those mushrooms Alyssa always wanted. I was so close to it, too. As you were. Max's stone-cold tone made you shiver. You would have looked away if your body didn't ache so much. It happened so fast, whatever that thing was. Moan vines, Cassian. You were captured by one of them. Moan vines? They, they did things to me. Oh, I know well what sort of things they did to you. Those things prey on hapless wanderers and knock them out, then keep them for sustenance. S sustenance Yes, that is, if I hadn't found you in time, I was waiting at the clearing for a while. It was getting dark, and I knew something must have gone wrong. I didn't think you would even make it to the marsh, but when I found your torn clothes scattered around the place, I knew it had to be one of those things. Good thing I brought a torch along, because arrows wouldn't, because arrows would have hurt you. I... See here? I'm very glad that you're still okay when I got to you, but you can't just throw your life away like that. And for what? Impressing Alyssa? If she really needed one of those ingredients, she would personally ask me to gather some for her, not you, Cassian. I'm sorry. It made both of us worried sick, you know that. When I brought you back home, she wouldn't stop crying and blaming herself while tending to your wounds. Oh, God. Oh, man. I wonder how this would have worked out. And be sure to apologize to Alyssa before you leave. She did not deserve any of this. Okay. Max sighed as he left the room, still visibly upset. Tension still lingered in the room even after Max had left for a long time. You felt tired and could barely lift a muscle as your body was sore all over. You wondered what would happen had you listened to their warning. You thought back to Alyssa's request for the day, and after looking around the room for a while, your backpack was nowhere to be seen. Perhaps it was lost in the forest, lying in that dark tree hole along with all the herbs you were supposed to bring back. Ah, it's not a good one. Hold up. Let's go back. No, go back. I don't like that. Uh, explore more. Okay, so... Alright. Nope, nope, I can go back. I have the ability. Uh, let's go back. Okay. You feel you've gathered enough for now. Okay, there we go. You quickly made your way back to the clearing, and as you expected, Max was standing there with a dead borax behind him. Done gathering the herbs? Yeah, I've even got some mushrooms, too. You said, showing off the edible mushroom from your satchel. Ooh, getting the hang of foraging, I see. Nicely done. Yep, how about you? Well, this should be enough for our trip tomorrow. He pointed to the borax. Oh, yeah, that should be enough. Uh, so, should we go back now? Not yet. I want to show you something. Come. Yeah, he followed Max He followed Max up towards the forest hill through a small dirt road. It seems like someone's been going this way for quite some time now. Well, yeah. I always go up here whenever I can. You'll see why in a moment. 
Oh, shit. Damn, I really missed quite a bit. The path led to a cliff overlooking the city and the mountain range from afar. The sun was just beginning to set upon the horizons as the skies turned an orange hue. You can see the stars appearing around the edges where the sky is dark enough to make them shine. It's beautiful. It's magical. You could say this is the main reason why I keep visiting Alyssa, aside from her cooking. Seeing this makes me hopeful. Like it's all my problem. Like all my problems went away, even for just a moment. All right, guys, I'm gonna save it right there. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm also gonna keep that as a secondary save. Man, that was pretty fucked up. Okay, I'm gonna have a decent amount of editing to do. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.